Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Uh, 20, I'm sorry, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Nice looking Wednesday morning. When I read the credentials of our next guest, you're going to say, wow, what an accomplished man. Uh, and he deserves to be accomplished. This guy's gone through hell and come back, Robin. Um, one of the reviews, I wanted to use the review actually as a way to introduce our guest. Um, OMG, what a great read. A book that is hard to put down. That's exactly right. Uh, Paul Ecke is the author I'm talking about. The book is called Boy Dreamer, an artist's memoir of identity, awakening, and beating the odds. Paul is, and here's here's the credentials. You're going to say, wow, what an accomplished guy. And he, and he is. We're not taking that away from him. No. But, but oh my gosh, what the dues he had to pay. Uh, he's a professional artist. His works are in the collections at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Wouldn't that be cool to be able to walk through a museum and see your artwork on the yeah. wall, right? Um, that is that's in Manila, right? In the Philippines, I think. No, it's it's oh. it's, it's, it's it's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and then he has the one in New artwork. York. Yeah, and then he has some in Manila, and also in the Philippines. And the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona. Yes, uh-huh. really, exactly. Uh, and in many private and corporate collections, I'm reading, obviously, Universal Studios, Taco Bell. I think that's J- cool. Jimmy's Sportswear, Dion Warwick's collection. He overcame a dysfunctional childhood. Oh my gosh! If there's ever been a guy I wanted to hug, it was this guy. Yeah. Did you? I mean, his story just makes you want to say, "Come here, you're going to be okay." But, mm-hmm. but he is okay. Um, good morning, Paul Ecky. Good morning, sir. Yeah. How are you? Good morning, Larry and Robin. Thank you for having me on your show. This I don't think I've ever wanted to hug a guy, but you needed one. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you calling from? Oh, you're bringing tears to my eyes. I'm in Palm Springs this morning. It's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning here. Oh, my gosh. You, you're not affected by any of that fire stuff, are you? No. Well, where I live, yes, I was. I live out about uh, uh, 40 minutes from Malibu, so um, I oh. have a lot of friends affected. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, I, the weather, the residual from the you know the weather was pretty bad. So I don't know where to begin with you because it, like most interv- interviews, we begin uh, you know at the age of twenty or thirty. I mean, yours is at yeah. four. We go back yeah. to four years old for you, the beginning of your book, right? Yes, yes, you're absolutely correct, Larry. So let's go there for the interview. Um, you were in a foster home. I was in a foster home at five. Yes, I. But your, um, yes. But your mom was alive. How did? What was the story? How come? Um, you well, ha- your mom is around and she visits you, but yet you're in a yes. foster home. Yes, my mom was uh, uh, young, and um, uh, my father had abandoned her, and she left her with uh, four kids, and she just couldn't cope. So she, the only thing she could do was. Uh, um, give us up for um, for foster care, and she was pregnant with another child and just couldn't support us. Oh, my gosh. How did um, that affect who you became? Well, that's a, God, that's a loaded question there. Um, it, it gave me, um, you know, I was a sensitive kid, and um, I, you know, I had to deal with this reality. So, um, um, and a, a difficult one at that, so I, I escaped into a, a dream world, and it was the only way I could cope. Yeah. And I became, you know, it, 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 it gave me um, the strength to become who I am. I took it, and I ran with it. And, and, and living in the dream world made you, uh, let's see, isolated from the real world, or did it uh, open up a whole world of creativity, or both? It, you, it both. It or, both. It both. Um, you know, I I became um, I a swing set in my school playground became my best friend, and um, I would uh, swing on the swing, and I would dream. And uh, the higher I would swing, the the more creative I became, and I I just went into that world and 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 created beautiful things in my mind. And uh, foster families are supposed to be nice and kind and gentle, but yours was abusive. Oh, so horrible. 
I can't even begin to tell you, Robin. Yes, they were very, very abusive, and they had one young daughter that w- that was their everything. And we we were there. There was three of us. There was th- uh, three of us, and um, uh, three of my siblings, and we were there just to uh, because they needed the income. So um, we were like, you know, uh, a, a piece of furniture there, basically. That is crazy. And usually when that circumstance is happening, the, the, the income is described by the, by the state or whoever pays that income. It's described as a stipend. In other words, it's not really supposed to be an income. It's just supposed to be, here's something to help you out with the fact that you're helping out. And, and am I right about right. that? You're absolutely correct. Wow. Correct. No love, no, you're, you're an object. So who was the, uh, the person, who was your salvation? Who's, who uh, became your hero? My hero became, well, this, this wing. Um, uh, it was the only uh, thing I can relate to. Uh, I, you know, I did have a, a, an older sister, and she was, she tried to help me through this. Um, but, you know, if she did anything, if she did much, she was a disciplined for you know, for uh, trying to hug me when I was um, upset, <laughs> a little emotional there. Yeah, yes. and, where, and where was it? And going going back in time, I get a little, you know. So yeah, so the swing that became the swing became my salvation. Oh my I, God. You know, I look forward to it every day. There's something very poetic in that, I, and and I, I suppose in a sad way, not a beautiful way. Well, yeah, beautifully sad. It's kind of weird, isn't it, that we look at it that way? Where, where was this? Where where was the foster home? The foster home was in Costa Mesa, California, about uh, ten miles away from the Pacific uh, Ocean. Oh, okay. So not a bad place. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not a bad place. You know, every day I'd get on a bus to go to a preschool or kindergarten and it was along the bus and I'd sit in that in the in the uh, bus seat and and also look out at the gaze out at the water and dream as well. Uh, did you find any um, solace in uh, 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 spiritualness or going to church? No, not at all because that was that was foreign to me as a child you know later in life of course uh, you know I have a, a, a deep spirituality. Um, church, not so much, but, um, you know, I do a lot of reading and I, I, you know, belong to groups and whatnot. And yeah, I have a, a deep, uh, spiritual, um, uh, belief system. Uh, when you started, when, when you began painting and finding your love of that, were your paintings dark? No, never dark. Always colorful, always colorful. Um, col- the color brought me joy. And, um, you know, and I could create anything. I was gifted that way. I could create anything on paper. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it was um, never, never anything dark for me, uh, unfortunately. So fast forward to when you were independent of that. You didn't need to, that anymore. Did you, did you have a good relationship with your mom? Loved my mom. My mom was my everything um, because it was always love. She might not have always been able to take care of us, in, you know, but we always had food on the table most of the time mm-hmm. and clothing, but a lot of love. One of you. So that, that was, you know, what, um, you know, what got me through. Where did uh, the art come from? How, how did you gravitate toward that? It was, it was my language. It was, um, you know, it, I, it, it was natural for me. And so, you know, I could look at something and draw it. I could, you know, I could, um, you know, I could do abstract work and it meant something to me. Um, I could do um, something very realistic that was, it came very easy. So I, you know, reading didn't be, you know, reading and uh, math and that kind of thing was always pretty much difficult as a young child for me. Oh, uh, you had to uh, come to uh, acceptance for your sexuality and that was very difficult for you. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, Rob. Yeah. Why, why was it difficult? Is it because um, of society? I mean, was social norm uh, whatever that is? Yes, absolutely. It was a time, and you know, and you know, when things when it was um, uh, considered a disease, a mental illness, and it was illegal. And um, you know, I you know, I so I I, I lived a lie uh, for a lot of a part of my life, um, and you know, I I um, did everything to escape it, if you will. I love how you say never apologize for or hide who you are just because people might be uncomfortable. 
Yes, yes. That that now that's how I feel about it. I am who I am, and I'm proud of who I am. So you know, I want to. I don't want to go out and scream my story, but I want to tell my story because I feel that it's a positive one. So yeah, my sexuality is. Um, I embrace that now. That's before I didn't, but it took a while, and it took some therapy, and you know, some good sessions. And then you had another setback when you were diagnosed with cancer. Yes, I did. I was kind of. Um, it slammed me against the wall, if you will, um, when I, you know, I just, it was hard to accept. And um, um, that created a whole new challenge in my life, another chapter, which again, now I, I embrace it as well. So, yeah, that well, was something. Paul Ecke is our guest, and uh, his last name is spelled E-C-K-E. Just if you're looking him up, uh, you will find some really good reviews on Amazon.com. Uh, the book is called Boy Dreamer. I wanted to ask you about the um, the artwork at the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona. Since, since we're near there, I would like to go see it. What, what's on display over there? Um, I believe what's on display there is something called fractal. And it's a repetitive pattern, very, very colorful, um, textural. And they're, they're, you know, if you're going to look at it, it's a lot of repetitive patterning. And if you were to look through a kaleidoscope, um, you know, if you can imagine that, that and you were looking at an object, you would, that's what you would see in my painting, whatever, you know, I was looking at at the time. So it's, it's very textural, very colorful. Oh, and, wow. um, we'll have to know, go over there and see it. Mm-hmm. Did I just hear a dog? Do you have a dog? <laughs> I do. I see. There's, there's three dogs. I, I, and they promised me to behave. <laughs> oh, they're fine. I love dogs. I love, they need a snack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a, my little Frida. She's my little rescue from, from uh, Tijuana. Oh, isn't that something? So, I love that. So you've you've been accomplished. Uh, t- was there a, um, a, a turning point in your art as far as uh, being accepted as a, and respected as an artist? You know, I don't know if, um, a turning point. I'm I'm kind of a like an abstract. I'm an abstract painter. That's what I'm known for, which gives me the freedom to roam. So you know, I never you know I stay with something for a year or two and develop that series and then I move on to something else. So I'm not kind of, I'm not a one note artist. And I also get into my formal training was in sculpture. So I just uh, finished an exhibition in Baja, um, uh, Baja and um, it on the, the uh, sculptures of um, warriors, you know, so it was uh, and that's a version the book, of what right? I wanted to do. That's the, the, sure. uh, the photos in the book. That's what we're talking about. Yes. Yes. Those are the warriors. Those are people that have passed from cancer that I that I gave them a name a, a virtue and um, I think there's like 14 15 of them and they all passed from cancer in the clinics I've been at it's very so haunting I, the 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 yeah the image the uh, sculptures which I guess is imagery yeah. because I'm looking at it as yeah. a photograph yes, that, absolutely. it's very haunting and and again poetic there's a poetic side to you is it is that what is that how you ended up writing a memoir is there some kind of a part of you that just wants to put things into words i did i did um larry and you know it was something i had i had to write it i had to figure out why what made me tick and what uh what it was all about you know i I needed to to know about it so it was a cathartic experience for me to write this book uh before your mom passed was she able to see and share in your happiness and your talents that you gave others I'm not sure about that. She died. Uh, she was 49, I believe, and um, I, I, I'm, she knew I was very creative. She really wanted me to go to college, and I was just graduating, and she was proud of me to do that, and she knew I was very artistic, um, but she didn't share including my lifestyle or you know any of that because um, I was not proud then. I was very closeted. So, but she she knew she loved me, and, and you know she was proud, and that's what I wanted. And are you still in touch with your siblings as a unit, family unit? I am. I'm in touch with all of them except my brother, who was actually there was two of them that were adopted out from the foster care, and we met up when we were um, older in life. And one of my sisters, Laura, I'm we're very very close, and my brother. 
uh, Bob, not so much because he lived a completely different lifestyle. He lived in a wealthy family and, you know, he just did, never could relate to me when we uh, found each other late in life. Oh, my. So I'm thinking that the, the fact that you were not in a wealthy family helped make who you are today. And, and, and I think as bad as that might have been, that was probably a good thing in the long in the big picture. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Yes, I, I can do, I can, I can, I can fit in in any situation and feel comfortable. Yeah. I love the different mediums that you paint in and you even paint with a trowel and that's, I, I haven't tried that. Is it hard? <laughs> it's pretty easy for me. I, it's like a, another hand for me and, you know, but with sharp, you know, uh, sharp edges and uh, and I in broader movement. So yeah, no, I I find it very easy. Do you know what? I, I'm going to go out on a limb and, and try to speculate on something. If if you and I sure. were sitting on a park bench, let's say yeah. someplace busy like Central Park or something, I would love that. I think okay. you would make me laugh with your observations on popular culture. I just think you disdain it. <laughs> am, <laughs> am I right about that? I but I think you would do it in a humorous way. I think I'd be just cracking up at you when you're making fun of whatever happens to pass our way. Not the people, but the popular culture that they might be that they might be embracing. Yeah, I I probably would. You know, I I I, I don't look at myself as being a real gregarious person in the way of you know um, that. But yeah, I can with people I know and. I, uh, yeah, I can do, I, I can do that. You're, I think so. Yeah, maybe I'm just, I'm not close enough. But if I were, I think you would do that. You probably do that with your friend, your close friends. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm a, with you know people that I'm, I'm not uh, real comfortable with or I don't know real well. I'm, I'm a little reserved in the beginning, but after that, watch out. <laughs> well, that's good. That's, a, that's pretty, yeah. pretty much the way most of us are, I think. Well, your students were very lucky to have you because you know, your bio oh. said that you taught art uh, to the uh, students in the public school system and uh, to allow them an somewhat of an insight into yourself if somebody if some of them were having issues you would encourage them to have this creative outlet correct yes it was um, important for me to you know when I, I did I started teaching young children in my in the beginning of my career in, in education and um, I you know I looked at every child as an individual and I tried to bring out their strengths and you know they you know they excelled at that and um, it was a very positive thing for me I I could feel them almost because I would go back to my childhood and you know when and uh, the pain that I had and, and especially with school and you know and I I understood that um, how how well do you uh, fit in with the uh, the folks who run the art museums? That uh, does does that question make any sense to you? How do I fit in? Um, well, you know, it's, it's a very reserved community, and uh, um, you know, it, it it's hard to uh, to uh, uh, infiltrate that 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 whole world. Yeah, yeah. Art, and I, I do have an agent. And, um, and well, I, you know, but the work has to speak for itself. And, you know, so they, it's something that, that you know, it has to, it has, it has to be something they're interested in. I, I always feel that everybody has a purpose and the, the, the people we are, we're probably the way we are because we have to be for the job that we're doing or for the task that maybe we were put here to do, if I could go on that, in that direction. But, but I often also think when I go to an art museum that the artists whose work is on the wall um, probably wouldn't have fit in at all with the people who own the museum or <laughs> the people who are, are the docents. Uh, it just seems like it's a completely different person. Uh, in, in St. Petersburg, we have uh, Salvador Dali's museum. And, I, and when I read about him, I think this guy wouldn't have, th they wouldn't have been friends at all. <laughs> they, they, they like his work. No. And mention, you mentioned Salvador Dali, one of my most respected, favorite artists in all times. I I follow him in Spain, I, you know, and all the I mean, the museums where his home is loved. Yeah, but I think you're right, Larry. I don't. I, I I sometimes don't think they have a clue of what it really is all about. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of like watching, uh, you know, like the Sex Pistols uh, playing for the Queen. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Or or Queen playing for the Queen, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I mean, all this. Ce- we're all celebrating Bohemian Rhapsody right now, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, all these people, they wouldn't have given uh, Freddie Mercury the time of day back in his yeah. day. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I uh, uh, like the fact that you give us an insight into the relationship you had with your grandfather. Okay, a little bit, huh? I didn't go into it big time. Um, but, yeah, you know, I loved him <laughs> dearly. But uh, you can kind of understand by reading between the lines. I didn't get real heavy into it, but that's where the sexual abuse came in. But, you know, I... For, I mean, it was a very, I didn't, I was a, it was a strange relationship. I didn't quite understand it. I, I understood the love, but I didn't understand anything else. Wow. Uh, there's so much more um, we could talk about. Right now, your book is doing really well on Amazon. If I could just brag yeah. about numbers for a second. Uh, I know as an artist, you probably don't care about numbers, right? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, oh, I, don't know about, I don't know about that. Uh, okay. Well, it's number 33, if I could say that. You're getting five-star reviews across the board. Um, that, does, that doesn't happen very often. Um, so I have a copy of the book. If I have a listener who would like the one copy that we have, it's called Boy Dreamer, Call Me. I'll pick a caller at random and you can have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll leave it for you here. I, I am definitely going to put this one up as one of the best of. I think I've loved this conversation, mm-hmm. Paul. Do you um, uh, do you have a, a website dedicated to your work or to your books? Or to yes, your- I do. It's uh, Paul Ecke, P-A-U-L-E-C-K-E dot com. Okay, Paul Ecke dot com. Do you have any plans for uh, Thanksgiving? I do. I'm here with um, my partner and uh, uh, in three very, very dear friends from San Francisco, and um, we're going to celebrate um, in Palm Springs. Big turkey and all the fixings. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Sounds, sounds, that's wonderful. Sounds really good. Uh, you really are giving something special by writing this book. You're allowing people to who read it to be truthful to themselves and to be able to just be themselves and if they need help or need any kind of reassuring that you are giving them the courage to do that also. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know if if they've had some feedback to this in this regard, but I think younger people, not just artists, but younger people uh, who are entering this world with the same kind of challenges that you entered it with probably will get strength and and maybe even courage um, based on what you've written. Right, right, right. Um, I th- I hope so. You know, I I look at you know challenges, and if you can overcome them, they become strengths. You know, being the cancer that I'm dealing with, I mean, I look at it all as an opportunity to grow from. Mm-hmm. How are you doing now with the cancer? Are you are you over? I'm doing. You know, I'm in stage four, um, but I have an incredible team of doctors at City of Hope and uh, USC Norris Keck, and um, they're keeping me good. I have a great, uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, family and a very good um, a team of um, friends that you know um, that um, I'm close with, and I'm very healthy. I'm very fit, and you know I plan on being here a long time. And it, and it's through my art that I can go out and create and 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 just look at it as just you know a little a, a bump in the in the road right now. And it seems like you have fun dogs too. That's a plus. I have fun dogs <laughs> that keep me happy. They give me lots of licks. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love Lots that. Of kisses. Lots of kisses. Lots of kisses. Paul, I, I, uh, I, I applaud you for uh, being brave and, and writing about this. This is so personal for you, and and uh, and I, I know it probably wasn't easy, especially doing these geeky radio shows like us, pe- well, us geeky people. So, uh, uh, no, you guys have been lovely, and I, I'm very grateful that you even you know that took the time to interview me and uh um i'm uh I'm, I'm grateful and we'll be heading over to daytona to see the work yes we will <laughs> thank you thank you so much Th- thank you paul happy thanks and happy thanksgiving to both of you and your listening audience thank you you beat me to it thank you all right we'll take a little break and be right back Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Direct Connect to UCF, where students who attend the College of Central Florida and graduate with an AA or articulated AS degree are guaranteed admission to the University of Central Florida. Success coaches are ready and waiting to assist you in designing an educational plan that is right for you in any of their locations across Central Florida. Remember, connecting is easy and guaranteed. Find out more at directconnecttoucf.com. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. President Trump has submitted his written